Well, good morning and welcome to South Berlin Baptist Church and this our online Sunday service. Whether you're new and joining us for the first time today or whether you've been joining us online for a few months now, or whether you're a regular or, or church family, it doesn't matter. I'm just so pleased that you've taken the uh, the time to join us for this online service. And I think we've got some good stuff coming up that I hope will really engage you. But let's start by doing what we should do, what we were created to do, worshipping God. You know, the psalmist wrote in Psalm 8, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens the majesty of god let's worship him because he is great oh lord my god when i in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made i see the stars I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think of God His Son not sparing, Send him to die, I scarce can take it. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come, with shout of acclamation and lead me on what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow with humble adoration and then proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul The psalmist said in Psalm 145, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. And the chronicler, writing one chronicles in the Old Testament, said splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Let's praise him, the splendor of the King. The splendor of the King.
is your name in all the earth you have set your glory in the heavens we will magnify oh lord our god how majestic is your name the earth is filled with your glory oh lord our god in majesty You set your glory above the heavens We will magnify We will magnify The Lord and throne in Zion We will magnify We will magnify The Lord and throne in Zion Established a throne, you reign in righteousness and splendor. Oh Lord, our God, the skies are ringing with your praise. Soon, those on earth will come to worship. We will magnify, we will magnify. Lord and throne and Zion, we will magnify, we will magnify the Lord and throne and Zion. God, the world was made at your command In you all things now hold together Now to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb Be praise and glory and power forever We will magnify, we will
Hi everyone, hope you're all keeping well, behaving yourselves, because I'll be checking. Um, has anyone got on the scales recently, the weight scales? On word advice, don't. I've gained five pounds. So, um, can you hear the dog in the background? Um, we're having roast dog tonight for dinner. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I hope you're all well, keeping well, and um, and just being good, really. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Well, here we are at a pastoral care meeting and look at our wonderful pastoral care team. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> A little later on, we're going to be continuing with our current series, The Miracle of Mercy, and thinking about how we need to reach out in mercy and in kindness and generosity to our friends, our family and our neighbours. But if you're one of our young family members, church family members, uh, or you're just young at heart, uh, then I think you might like this. Loving others and treating others right matters a lot to God. But to do that, it helps to remember some important things. First, be sure to love other people. I mean, really love them from your heart. No pretending. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on with all your might to do what is good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice putting others first until you're the very best at it. When you're serving Jesus, don't be lazy. Be enthusiastic and cheerful. <laughs> Serve Him with a glad heart. When other followers of Jesus need something, be ready to help them out. And if anyone needs a place to stay or something to eat, offer them yours. When things get hard, don't give up. Keep going and pray even harder. Laugh with them when they're happy <laughs> and cry with them when they're sad. Be friends with everybody. Don't be a snob and only hang out with the cool crowd. Be everybody's friend. And whatever you do, don't be the guy who thinks he knows everything or who always has to be the center of attention. Be nice and say kind things to everyone, even the people who are mean to you, even the people who go out of their way to make sure you have a very bad day. Be nice to them and don't grumble about them under your breath. Get along with everyone as much as you can even though it's hard sometimes. And if someone does something that makes you mad, move on. Don't try to get back at him. God will sort all of that out, and he will take care of it. Instead, be someone others can count on to do the right thing, no matter what. So if you see your enemy and he's hungry, go get him some lunch. Or if he's thirsty, give him something to drink. When you do that, you'll surprise him a lot. And who knows, it might even make him feel bad. Sort of like heaping hot coals on his head. And then maybe he will want to be different. Finally, whatever you do, don't let evil get the best of you. Instead, overcome evil with good. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you that you love and care for us so much. Thank you that you're a merciful God. We pray for President Donald Trump and his wife as they test positive for coronavirus. We pray that no matter how we feel politically, that you will heal them and come close to them. We pray for the worldwide devastation of coronavirus. We pray for miracles, especially in third world countries. We pray so much that ways will be found to stop the virus spreading. We pray for our government and the difficulties they face with the pandemic. Please give Boris Johnson and our government wisdom to know what to do and how to move forward. Help us as a church family to be proactive in helping our friends and neighbours, especially at this difficult time. We want to thank you so much for all you've done for Jeff, and we pray that you will be especially close to Margaret, Sarah Jane, Sue, Ray and Cathy. Thank you that 17 Try Praying leaflets went from our dispenser outside the church. We pray for those 17 unknown to us that you will move in their lives. We pray that you will help us to listen to what you have to say now in the message. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 
Well, as I said, we're continuing with our series, The Miracle of Mercy, and that ties in with the studies that our small groups are doing, our home groups are doing. Some of them are doing uh, them by Zoom and watching the video uh, as part of the Zoom meeting. Um, others have found other ways to meet, and it's just great if you're able to follow in the small groups, follow this series. But if you're not, then I hope there's plenty here to keep you engaged as we go through this important series. Um, you know, in Proverbs... Chapter 3, verses 27 to 30, it says, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbour, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you, when you already have it with you. Do not uh, plot harm against your neighbour who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse anyone for no reason when they have done you no harm. And you know, the message translation uh, puts the, the first half of those verses like this. Never walk away from someone who deserves help. Your hand is God's hand for that person. Don't tell your neighbour, maybe uh, some other time or try me tomorrow. It's so important, isn't it, that for friends and family and neighbours, and we'll come on to who our neighbour is in a moment, it's so important that we reach out uh, in, a, in a merciful and generous way, in the same way that God has been merciful and generous with us. You know, there's a classic children's book called The Giving Tree. Uh, it's been a favourite, I think, of, of many people since it was first published in 1964. And in the book, it is the tree that always gives to the little boy, just as the title suggests. When the boy is young, the tree gives him apples from its branches, a place to climb and play, as well as shade to rest under. Now, when the boy returns to the tree as an adult after a long absence, the tree again gives. It gives gives the boy wood from its branches for a home, uh, its apples to be sold for financial gain, and ultimately its trunk so that the man can construct a boat to sail away from his worries. And after each description in the book of the tree's generosity, the subsequent page always reads the same, and the tree was happy. See, rather than noting that the boy was happy in light of what he received, the story says that the tree was the one who found real joy in the act of giving. So as we bear that in mind, let's think about giving mercifully, generously, reaching out to our friends. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 27 to 28, part of what I read to you a moment ago, says, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbour, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you, when you already have it with you. You know, these verses speak about those whom we have regular contact with. Probably for most of us, that means predominantly friends and family. And it speaks of having an opportunity to give or to do good to them and doing it without delay. Um, it's saying that to act at once when they are obviously in need, or they ask, to act at once um, is the merciful uh, response. Um, and, you know, if we withhold that help, actually, it's unmerciful. You know, a merciful friend or family member is one who seeks good for the other person and wants to do all that they can for them immediately. If we delay, then that probably means we're considering how we might tone down the help we're willing to offer. Or maybe we're even considering withholding the help completely. Uh, is it a case of, oh, if I give this to you, then I won't have it for myself? You see, I believe, based upon these verses in the Bible, um, a true friend is one who seeks not only the good for that friend or family member, but the best. A merciful person will seek the best for his or her friend or family member, whatever the personal cost to them. But the other thing I want us to think about, or the other group of people, is also doing the same thing for our neighbour. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 29 and 30, the second half of what I read to you earlier, it says, Do not plot, plot harm against your neighbour who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse anyone for no reason when they have done you no harm. This is about neighbours 
and by implication, often neighbours will be strangers. Jesus made it very clear that a neighbour is anyone who is in need that we encounter. We're to help them. They're our neighbour. People you come across that you may not be acquainted with, but, you know, or maybe you are vaguely acquainted with them, but they're not in your social circle. They're not in your family. They're not in your friendship group. See, I believe this passage is also particularly speaking about those who are very different from us. You know, there's a great preacher, modern preacher called Haddon Robinson. He said, your neighbour is anyone whose need you see and whose need you are able to meet. A neighbour is someone who says, what is mine is God's and what is God's belongs to my neighbour because my neighbour belongs to him. And you remember Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 25, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And of course, when the listeners heard Jesus say that, they said, when do we do that for you? He says, when you did it for the least noticed, the least deserving, the most different, the most unlikable, when you did it for those groups of people, you did it for me. You know, there was a story that uh, went around a few years ago of a popular secondary school girl who heard a noise coming from a locker in the passageway at school. And when she opened the locker, she found a small boy who hadn't long been at the school. And some of the bigger students had forced him into the locker, stuffed him in there and locked it. Well, she not only freed him from the locker, but she also befriended him. And actually, as a result of that friendship, she was able to stop the bullying he was experiencing. When asked why, she simply said, because that is what Jesus would have done. When they interviewed the boy, they asked him, what did, what had he done to turn the bullies against him? What egregious thing did they consider unforgivable and, and that, that which would justify their cruelty to him? He answered as truthfully as he knew how, and he said, just being different. See, Jesus wants us to be merciful and to treat strangers, people who are different, people we don't know very well, in a way that blesses them. And do you know what? When we do that, we get blessed as well. There's an old parable about a man who had a dream one night. And in the dream, he first went to a dark and oppressive city where all the people there held bread and water in their hands. But none of them was able to bend their arms and to get the food or the water to their mouths to quench their thirst and their hunger. Then the same man went to a bright and pleasant city. And there everyone lived with exactly the same issue. But they had done something. Rather than only trying to feed themselves unsuccessfully, they had discovered that they could easily and wonderfully feed each other. And in caring for one another, they had blessed others, obviously, and they'd received a real blessing themselves. And it was why it was such a happy place. No, you know, it's not a, a fairy tale or a children's story. It really is true. That is the way God wants things to operate. When we live in a way that shows a real desire to, to show others mercy, to help others, to bless others, we mysteriously and ironically get blessed ourselves. Let's pray. Father, we want to be those people who bless others, who show mercy to others, who help others, be they family, be they friends, be they neighbours, be they very, very different people from us. People actually we find quite tricky, difficult, unpleasant. Help us to have a heart that says, do you know what? We're going to bless you and show you mercy anyway. Help us to do that by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask it in Jesus name. Amen. It's an old song, but it's a great song to pull together what we've been thinking about and allow us to connect with God and listen to what he might be saying to us today, who he might be wanting us to reach out to. It's a song entitled, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. 
As you go into this new week, remember, God really, really wants us to love him with everything we have and to love others in the same way that we love ourselves. So let's seek to do that in the days ahead. Thank you so much again for being here, joining this South Berlin online worship service. Have a great week. Stay safe and God bless you.